Hello everyone and welcome to another podcast. So what have I been up to? Um, not a great deal. Um, I did actually have to go back to work. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do have to pay the bills and the mortgage. So um, before I left for work, I did actually pretty much um, get built a, um, the slot together um, kitchenette unity sort of thing for my van. Um, so I'll, I'll put a video up wherever. Um, and this is the same principle as the, the, the bed that I made. Um, basically, it's a slot together. Um, there's no screws in it other, other than where the hinges are. But the whole idea behind it is that I can either put into the van or take out of the van in the space of 10 minutes. That's the whole idea. So I'm not committed to a, you know, to a full design or, or a fixed, or a fixed um, unit or bed in the van, which is really good. So, you know, should I need to, I don't know, maybe get quite a lot of timber. I can rip everything out, you know, nice and quick, no tools required. And I can and I can put you know a lot of timber in the back, or maybe I'm I'm moving a a, a settee for for someone, you know, same same again, you know, I can I can put a settee in the back of it because you know I obviously can take that out. So um, just a concept. There's nothing special about it other than the fact that it slots together. So um, I do actually want to highlight. Um, a joiner or a woodworker. Um, I think the guy's from Korea. Um, I come across him maybe a couple of weeks ago on Instagram. Um, I'll I'll put a video up of one of the workbenches he's there uh, using. This is a this is a funny old workbench. I've never seen anything like it, um, and I have. Um, you know, researched um, workbenches benches quite extensively, um, and as as I said, I've never come across it uh, before. This is kind of like a bit of a frame, um, very unusual, very unusual. And when I seen it um, the the other day, um, I actually tried to look it up um, on me on me dinner break. I did try to look it up. Um, I tried um, looking for Chinese um, workbenches, um, Korean workbenches, so on and so forth, and, I, and nothing come up. As I say, I've never seen anything like this. So what's really good about this workbench, it's been cleverly thought out. Um, you know, the work holding's absolutely excellent. As I say, there'll, there'll be a visual up. Um, just check out the work holding. One of the things that really impressed us um was um the fact that he had he had a piece of timber line on the bench and this was going to button against um two um two square pegs and on the other side he had another square peg and it had notches in it and he had another section um, which was pushing against the notches in the square peg and going against the workpiece and it was on a diagonal so basically the more he tapped that peg with the notches in down the more that pushed the the, the wood between the notch and the workpiece and it clamped it into place very very simple but at the same time you know it's ingenious i've never seen anything like that before really really good idea i did come close to like figuring out something myself but it wasn't it wasn't nowhere near as good as that so um i would check them out because um if you're on instagram i'd maybe give them a follow as well um i've got a i've got a good feeling um people are going to learn a lot including myself they're going to learn a lot from them okay so Today um, is all going to be about this um, guy, um, this is a Roman workbench, so a bit of a disclaimer here or a bit of a warning roller, um, for those of you that are listening maybe on Spotify or Spreaker or, or Amazon or, or wherever, if you're listening to this and you're not actually watching it on YouTube, um, it may be it may be better for you to watch it on YouTube. Um, I may give a couple of demonstrations. I may not. We're going to basically see how this, you know, pans out. Um, 
I will say there might be a bit of banging. Probably I'm going to be moving about, maybe move the bench about showing things. So be warned, as I said, there might be some, you know, some loud bangs if you're listening to this, um, you know, um, in a car or something. So, you know, you might want to switch it down a little bit. I don't know, but that's just a little bit of a warning. So when I first started messing around with these, um, I got a ton of questions. Um, and over the last, I don't know, maybe five years, I've had a ton of questions. I still get questions, although it has died down a little bit, but I do still get questions. So I'm basically going to go um, basically through some of the some of the, the questions that I get asked on a regular basis. Obviously, there is more questions. Um, if you have got questions and if I get enough questions, um, I'll most likely do a follow up to this. So leave your questions in the comments. I will read them. Um, as I said, if I get enough questions, um, I'm probably not going to respond to you um, or, or answer your question in full in the comments. I'm most likely going to do another video or podcast, whatever, to ex to explain it or or to demonstrate it. Um, while I'm at it, um, if you guys would like a, a live stream where you could maybe ask us um, to demonstrate stuff on the Roman workbench, um, would that be something you guys are interested in? If you want to see something like that, um, again, let us know in the comments. So before we go ahead with this, um, most people will know, but some people don't know. Um, there is a free ebook, um, no signups, no nothing. You click on the link, you either read it online or you can download it. As I said, no signups, no nothing. So that will give you the information on how to build one of these. It'll also show you how to um, use one of these to a degree. Um, if you do have one of these and you haven't already seen some of my videos, um, go to my YouTube channel and check out um, the Roman Workbench playlist. There'll be a video there that is titled um, how, how the Roman Workbench Works, I believe, um, part two. So the part two, um, it's, had a, it's, it's been received very well. It's good, clear, um, good audio, um, pictures, good, everything. So if you want to know how to use one of these, that's probably the, the place to be. Or the, or the video to watch rather. The first question, which um, bench is my favorite bench because I have made, <laughs> I've made about six or seven of these benches. Um, so the bench I'm sitting on is my favorite bench, um, evidently because I've had, to, I've had to get rid of a few benches. Um, sadly, there's actually, as I look out my window here, there's a bench sitting underneath my um, kitchen window, which is, you know, it's it's bearing the full brunt of um, the rain and, and whatever else. Um, but this this is a this is an oak bench. Um, this is the best bench today that I've built. This is the one I'm most happy with. This is the one that I think um, I'm pretty close. Um, to making it perfect for me, not for anybody else. Perfect for me. That's that's one thing I must highlight. This is perf nearly perfect for me. So, um, as I said, this is um, solid oak. It is, I believe, somewhere is it two inches? It's it's just over two inches um, in thickness. And it is um, just under 13 inches in width. Um, there is a bit of weight to it. Um, you do need a little bit of weight to these or it is more, more desirable to have some weight to them. Um, what I would change on this bench, because um, I do get asked this as well, I would make this slightly wider to 15 to 16 inches. I have made benches 15 to 16 inches and I find those better. 
um, just because it gives you more surface area to have your pieces on your work pieces and you know when you're assembling furniture so on and so forth um, another thing I'd most likely do is I would most likely move the leg um, the conical tenant mortise um, holes um, more towards the outside which would actually push the legs make the legs protrude um, a little bit more so when I first started making these I always wanted to keep the legs underneath the bench um, because you know when you're moving around the bench it can be a tripping hazard having having used these for you know quite some time and um, I did actually use this bench exclusively for it must have been about two years um, so you know I've got a lot of experience with these in my opinion is that I would rather have the legs like you know come out either side of the bench um, a little bit more to give it more stability um, that's my again that's my personal opinion it may not be your opinion but through practice and using the bench I think for me at least that's that's better so uh, what sort of material can I use um, making a Roman workbench so <laughs> you use whatever you want <laughs> it doesn't mean it's going to be good though so one of the one of the questions I've had a lot is can I use 2 by 4s um, I'm going to say no don't use 2 by 4s if you want to use 2 by 4s use them but my advice would be not to use them so there's a lot of people that will get 2 by 4s and put them on end and you know glue them together so the problem with two by fours or three by twos, you know, you know, some, you know, those two sizes, is that the material that's used to make them, it tends to be um, not great. If you compare, if you compare a two by four or a three by two to to let's say a six by two or a seven by two or an eight by two. The higher numbers, they tend to be better material. So the problem with the three by twos and the four by twos is that it tends to be a lot lighter. It tends to be kind of more like a like a spruce. Um, the timber is is like it's grown really quickly. Um, it tends to be weaker. It tends to twist a lot more. Um, it tends to bore. It tends to um, cup a lot more. Um, you guys will know yourself if you go here in England if you go to the likes of B&Q, Wix's, anywhere like that um, and you pick up a 3 by 2 or a 4 by 2 um, you know if, if if the price doesn't knock you off your feet um, the, the twist in the cup and probably will um, it, don't get us wrong it has gotten better in recent years but you know what a few years ago you know you could look down four by two or a three by two and it'll just it, it, it may as well have been a corkscrew you know so that's kind of the reason i say not to use it um if you if you are stuck i would recommend using something bigger um like a like a six by two or a or a seven by two you know and just glue them together you know um, take the rounds off them off the inside edges and you know and, and just glue them two edges together i personally think that's going to be better um so as i said this is made with oak oak's a really good choice um this is this has been used and abused and that's how i think that's how i think a workbench should be um you know they're not for me at least they're not there to look pretty they're there to do a job you know so as i said this has been used and abused it's held up very very well um no issues with it i, I tell a lie i tell i do tell a lie i did actually snap one of the legs um but that was kind of my own fault i was like carrying the whole bench like so it was like kind of vertical um i I tripped and I dropped it 
um, and it landed on one of the legs. I can't even remember which which leg it was now. Uh, so basically, I just had to you know make a new leg for it. But you know, it snapped. Um, it snapped just just below the conical. The, the conical tenant where, where where the conical tenant goes into the bench i think about maybe uh, an inch down from there it, it snapped you know it's it's to be expected um possibly not the best choice of um timber um for for this sort of bench so um Sapelli is quite a good choice. Um, I've made maybe four benches with Sapelli, I think. Um, held up very well. Uh, same again, no issues at all with them. Um, Ash would be a really good um, choice. Obviously, it's got weight. It's quite strong. Um, Beach, again, would be another good one. Um, another another popular question I get asked is how wide should I make it so as I said this is um, just under 13 inches so I say again this is my personal opinion with using the benches I would say you know you want to be looking at like 15 to 16 inches so 15 to 16 inches is going to kind of give you you know that that kind of that kind of straddle um if you're quite tall and you've you know you've got you know you, you you're not restricted um you know by your by your fascia or anything like that you know you, you you've got you know some flexibility in your growing you know you might want to go a little bit wider you know if you're tall tall you could possibly get away with something like 20 inches I mean, i don't know um I've never pushed it to 20 inches and I don't think I ever will push it to 20 inches. I think for me, I think the sweet spot for me is going to be around 15, 16 inches, possibly 17 inches. Um, so again, it depends. It depends what you're making and um, what you're going to be using the bench for. You know, you could be using this for, I don't know, maybe um, making chairs. So I'll, I have made three or four chairs on this. Um, one of the things that's been predominant is that there's not enough, there's not enough width, um, you know, basically to rest me, me chair on, you know, when I'm kind of, um, you know, flushing up the legs, you know, or, or I've just basically got it on there to, I don't know, you know, um, maybe I've got the legs in place and maybe I'm marking out for, you know the spindles for the backrest or or for the armrests. Um, there hasn't been enough enough width, so I've had to I've had to come into the shed and you know get you know get a piece of um, ply or whatever. Um, so that's that was pretty predominant um, with that. Um, so you know maybe if you are doing wider pieces. You know use use a wide like make it wider and see how you get on with that and um, the only issue with that is the wider you make it's um the more prone you're going to be <laughs> um for for cutting and twisting so uh, it's 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 one of those you know you could go for it but it might bite you in the in the butt it might not so um how thick should you make this so i've used as little as 45 millimeters which is just under two inches um and that was with um sapelli with a softwood um the likes of um you know the the two by six or or the or the eight uh, sorry the, the seven by the seven by two sorry um you might be pushing it um i have i have made benches like that and the the were kind of okay um but preferably if you are going to be like skimping you know on the on the fitness for whatever reason maybe that's all that's there maybe that's all you can afford maybe it's just some free wood that's lying around whatever um 
I definitely wouldn't I definitely wouldn't go any any less than that. I think ideally um, maybe about two and a half to three inches would be good. Again, just my opinion. Um, haven't built you know like you know about however many I've built of these. I, I, I lose track. Um, so I would like ideally I think this this particular bench it would have been good at um you know maybe two and a half inches i think i would be happy with that don't get us wrong i'm happy with it how it is now um as i said i haven't had no issues with it so <laughs> this is this is another one i get um quite often how tall should i make it so the issue with this, and I've explained this in the book, again, if you haven't read the book and you're interested in making one of these, go and get the book. It's free. There's no sign up. As I said, just click on the link, read it, click on the link, download it, whatever. So the, the issue with answering this question is because unless the person is the same height as me, um, and even then, if, he, if the person is the same height as me, it's still not a clear-cut picture. Um, because, as we all know, we are all different. Some of us have got longer torsos and shorter legs, and some of us have got longer legs and short, shorter torsos. Um, and we could all be the same height. Um, so that's, that's one of the main, the main problems. And also, all of us aren't the same height, so this bench um wouldn't be suitable for say someone who is oh let's say a basketball uh, player um you know i i don't know what what are them guys you know get up to them you know some of those some of those guys are like i'm i'm guessing yeah by the way because i don't watch uh, uh, basketball but i'm guessing some of those guys are like nearly seven foot so um I'm five foot six, five foot five, so, somewhere in that region. So I'm a pretty short guy. Um, so one of the one of the issues is that when you are making a bench, you you should be making it for you. And again, I do stipulate this in the book. So as you can see, my knees my knees are just above the top of the bench. This is a nice height for me. This is this is pretty good so same again if i am kneeling this allows me to have one leg pretty much straight so it's it's not bent this isn't take the muscles not getting there fatigued and it's not to the point where i'm actually having to fatigue my calf muscle by using um like basically standing on my tiptoes it's just nice you know so i could you know be kneeling on this and using a saw or I could be kneeling on this and using one of the accessories um, you know there might be a piece on the side I might be I might be planing so it's just nice and the good thing about this is that you've got one foot on the floor and you're kneeling it's actually really comfortable uh, working like this um, providing that you're up straight um, if you bent over i've got a, i've got issues with my back so if i'm bent over for like hours at a time it, it can it can be quite painful for us at the end of the day but if i'm like this and i'm playing and let's just say i've got multiple boards um you know glued together Let, let's just say it's you know 20 inches um after the blue after the boards are glued together i have um cut the boards and i am just planing the end grain you know just to make everything nice and smooth you know that's a really nice height but the same again you know imagine if this height was the the bench was taller i kind of i'm gonna be up here it's just not going to be comfortable for us so you've got to take that into mind something else if i was using this bench and I'd built this bench for, say, one of those basketball players. Um, it's going to be up here. So one of the issues with that, and you can try this out yourselves, is that me, when I'm sitting on it like this, my feet are actually going to be elevated off the floor or hanging, hanging off the bench. Um, and if you sit on a, a bench or a table um, as high as this one, 
you'll notice after a while you'll start to get pains in your in your hamstrings and if you're going to be working on this for hours at a time you don't want to be getting pains and, and whatever else aching in your in the backs of your legs it's 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 just not it's just not good is it so what i recommend you can't really see very well here but as i'm standing next to the bench the crease the crease of my of the back of my leg it's this this bench is pretty much centered to the crease in the back of my knee um and this is a rule i've used for pretty much all of the benches and i've never had any issues i've never had any aching with my legs um so if it's not broken i'm not gonna fix it it's i personally think it's a good rule to go by another question is um how long should i make the bench so this bench i think is about this is about five and a half foot this is 67 um inches which is uh slightly over five and a half foot so again my personal opinion in for the work that i do um i personally think about six foot in length is is a good starting point same again though it depending on what work you do if you're going to be using i don't know maybe eight foot length boards you may want to consider making an eight foot uh, long bench you know it's it's you know it, it's kind of common sense in a way but I, I think a lot of people just like kind of worry about things and they overlook things and they get overwhelmed by things so you know just just try and same with all of these questions just you know i would advise you just to sit down and have a long think just say well you know i'm only going to be using four foot boards there's hardly ever going to be a time when i'm going to be using you know um you know eight foot lengths of material so you know a six foot might be good for you so something else to consider as well let's just say you're not going to be using anything over three foot you may say to yourself well a four foot a four foot um bench um is big enough for me and that may be true but the issue with a four foot bench and i know this because i built a four foot bench my first whoop my first roman bench was four foot long um and the issue with that bench i've still got the bench it's around it's around at my mom's in my old shed um the issue with that bench is that it is too light um it moves about um it moves about still even on grass um which which is probably one of the best places to use one of these benches again in my opinion if it's if it's on the light side um but it does still move about and that's one of the issues if you're going to be sitting on the bench um, or kneeling on the bench or there's going to be a lot of weight on the bench you know it mightn't be an issue um but as i said i, I think six foot or five and a half foot because this this is pretty good but i personally think about six you know f five to six foot you know in between six foot probably being better i think that's kind of the sweet spot at least that's my opinion so what sort of joints um would i recommend um to use for the legs so i have built um i've built a few of these with um conical tenants and i've built um one or two of them with um round tenants you can use both um now to date i probably would favor the conical tenants um i've had less issues with the conical tenants so one of the issues i've had with the round tenants um is that um the the round tenants themselves have actually shrunk um which obviously has made them come loose i mean in the you know in the in the bigger the bigger picture shall we say it's it's not really going to be um you know like a, like a major issue and it wasn't a major issue 
all I had to do um, was basically just just um, re re wedge them and problem solved. You know, I split the I split the top. Um, you know, I opened the top up a little bit, say the end grain um, with a chisel. Um, had a new wedge, big glue on the wedge, and, and just tapped it home, and it was nice and tight again. Um, this fella here, um, I haven't had to touch the joints at all, all other than, all other than when I um, um, snapped the leg. Uh, but, you know, this is pretty much as solid um, as the day I built it, pretty much. So, I would pretty much recommend um, Conical Tenants. For anyone that doesn't know what a conical tenon is, um, if you're watching us on YouTube, you should be able to see um, a leg here. This is this is one of the legs from um, one of the benches that I couldn't get rid of. <laughs> it's um, this is one of the ones where I never glued the legs. So basically, if I want to use this, um, I basically put this into the bench top. Um, Line it up with some, um, you probably not see that, but there is a mark. Yeah, line it up with the marks and just tap it home with a with a mallet or a hammer. Um, and because these are conical, they just tighten up, um, you know. So I do, I, I do prefer the, the conical tenants. Um, so for those of you that are wondering, how do I make a conical tenant? So... I do actually have these um, various um, conical tenon cutters. I use these by hand. There is other means to do it. I'm not going to get into the other the other things that are available, um, but there is other things available. Um, in fact, I will. I will. I'll show you. Um, so this is the same sort of thing um, as this. So. What you would do, you would get this, you would put it onto the top of um of your leg. Obviously, you would have you would have tapered this down most or at least I do. I taper it down by by eye um using um a draw knife. Once it's starting to get close, you know, you just keep trying, keep trying once it fits in, fits on the top, and you just turn it and the two of these work pretty much the same way. Um it's pretty much they're pretty much just like big pencil sharpeners for a for a lack of lack of words basically. Um, so for the for the conical uh, mortise, same again. I've just used this. I've used this on all the chairs I've built. I've used this on all of the benches I've built that's used conical tenons. And this is just a um, a veritas um, conical tenons. Um, Mortis um, Rima, so yeah, bought. I can't remember me being about thirty pound when I bought it. Um, I think you can get these from Axe Minister. I think that's where I got it from. Um, never had no issues with it. Uh, I think I've had it out once to sharpen it. Um, by the looks of it, it does need another sharpener. There's a few. Um, there's a few nips in it actually. Yeah. Probably do with a, another shop and that. Um, but if you are planning on making chairs, um, maybe making these benches as well, I personally think again, if you've got the money to do so, I, th I think it's um, it's a tool that you should buy. Um, I don't regret buying this. Um, it, it was a good buy. I've used it time and time again. But when I did buy it, I did. I did think that I was going to be making maybe one or two of these um, and plus chairs, which I've done. So, you know, for me, it was a good buy. Another question that I get, um, does the underside of the bench need to be flat? Um, the simple, simple answer to that is no, it doesn't need to be flat. Um, so this, this particular bench, it has um, quite a bit of cutting underneath, and I'm gonna see if I can show you this with a straight edge. So when I bought this, this was killing this was killing dried, 
Um, obviously being in a killing, um, and it was there was quite a bit of cupping in it. Um, I did get it at a discount, that's why I got it, but it was a lot of work. <laughs> so let's see if we can. So I'm looking underneath here, I don't know if you can see that on a camera, but when I'm looking underneath here, uh, it's looking I've maybe got about like a quarter of an inch in the center. So that's how much it's cutting. So to answer the question, no, you really don't need to. Um, and just to give you a look on the underside. So as you can see, you can still see all my pencil marks. It is, it is rough sewn. <laughs> you can even see I believe those are the are the footprints of the guy <laughs> at the uh, at first gear sawmill um, who actually um, was standing on this and he, he used a chainsaw to to actually cut this. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's really no reason to have the underside. Um, like totally flat so what I concentrated on was the the top obviously um, and the two sides in case I ever want to reference the sides you know you know clamping to the sides for planing and so on and so forth so another question is can I can I add a vase so if you want to add a vase add a vase I personally don't see the point in adding a vase though the whole thing with these um, these sorts of benches is that they never had they never had um, vases. Possibly, possibly the taller Roman work benches the might have had vases, um, but I'm pretty sure the low benches didn't have vases. They didn't need to have vases. I mean, with all the pegs, um, the wedge system, you pretty much you pretty much tackle everything. There hasn't been anything that I haven't been able to to do or to, to accomplish. Let's let's just say with um, with the wedges, um, the wedges, the pegs, um, and obviously the the notch and the notch accessory, um, which is which is this guy here. This is um, this is a notch accessory, um, and basically. As it sounds, it's an accessory for the notch. It goes into here and a wedge just goes into it. And with this, you're able to get, you know, it, it does open up quite a lot of opportunities for, you know, work hold and so on and so forth. So one of the other questions I get um, while we're on the subject is, can you use this um, like a tall bench? kind of yes and kind of no <laughs> there's no there's no kind of easy answer to it but um if you look at it in the aspects of you know kind of making draws you know can i make a draw in the same way i would make a draw with say the nicholson bench that i'm sat next to um yeah you can um kind of just using this guy here so if we if we use um, the wedge, which I've got here, for those of you that aren't watching. So basically a wedge goes in, um, and you would tap this in with a hammer or a mallet. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's going to transfer into the recording and the audio. So basically once this is in place, um, all I would do, I would have a piece of wood Let's just say this is a board of six inches wide. So that would get clamped to there. Um, and basically I could use, I could use a traditional um, dovetail and saw. Um, me personally, um, those of you that follow us will know that I use pretty much all Japanese saws most of the time. Um, and I would basically have the piece, you know, lying on the bench and I would cut it at the end of the bench um, using, using a vertical cut method. But as I said, if I ever chose to, um, you know, I could get me traditional um, dovetail and so, which which I still have here. Um, 
you know, and I could, and I could cut it in an upright position the same way that I would be using the Nicholson bench, um, you know, so yeah, you, you can definitely use it um, in an upright position. Um, same with planing as well. Um, if you've got, you know, like, you know, tallish boards and you want to ed edge plane them, same again, this, this notch accessory, it, it will hold them. So another question that I get asked is um, what degree should the wedge be? So I have messed around with different um, different degrees and I personally find that six degrees um, you'll get you get quite a lot of clamping force with six degrees. So one of the problems that I see um, with any type of wedge, um, whether it's used in a notch or if you use it on a tall bench, um, I forget I forget the name, but but basically um, I, I only seen it just the other day on Instagram, um, and someone was using a couple of bits of ply that had a that had a ply section um, fitted with you know, smaller dogs or pins. Um, I had a had a section on a on a slant, um, and they had a wedge, but the, there was quite a lot of tape around the wedge. I, I don't know the degree, um, and they basically um, pushed the piece in, pushed the wedge in, and it tightened up on itself. I mean that partic that particular um, method was actually quite good, um, even though it was a white tape on the on the wedge itself, simply because at the edge of the wedge. It had like a, it had like a little lip, so basically the harder you push, um, well, are you planing or whatever else onto the board, the tighter that's going to get. Um, so on that particular case um, or instance, it's it's actually not too bad. But one of the problems being is that if you haven't got something like that, you haven't got a lip at the edge of your wedge, the the steeper you you make this wedge it loses it loses its its ability to actually be hit down and, and stay because the more taper that's on it it just wants to come out but the less of a taper it will actually go in and one of the problems i actually did encounter and still do encounter occasionally with this is over tightening um i'm not going to show you the same again because of the audio but if i was to put the 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 wet uh, sorry the notch accessory into the bench and give this a good old wallop down with a hammer or a or a mallet i would i would struggle like really struggle to actually get this wedge out um you know even when i'm hitting the bottom of it um it, it can be really problematic so what <laughs> one of the ways i've actually got to get it out once it's in i've actually got to wiggle it from side to side um you know and it's even then it can be a little bit it can take us like up to up to a minute a minute and a half even two minutes to get the thing out so you know if if you've got the right if you've got the right um degree which this is like six degrees so if this is zero this being six degrees um you know you will get a lot of clamping pressure for these and it will hold the workpiece um very well Dog wool placement, um, I did actually do a video on this, um, so I'm not going to go into it too much. What I will say is that when you are, when you are making the, the dog holes, make the dog holes for you, make it for your work. Um, and obviously that's, that's what I've kind of evolved into. Um, so every sort of bench I make like this, um, I've already got a lot of experience with the dog hole placement. Um, I know which dog holes I'm using a lot. I would know which ones I'm not using. I would know which ones that don't get used a great deal, but still are, you know, still are needed. Um, so it's the same again. I mean, just to give you a little bit of a demonstration here. If we are using um, boards that are maybe, I don't know, three quarters of an inch um, thick, we want our 
we want our dog hose to accommodate this. So what this means um, is that if we have if we have a dog hole in the centre, I need some new dogs actually. If we have a dog hole in the centre, that's that's the centre piece, and that is going to holes. Um, I haven't got no, <laughs> got no free three quarter inch uh, boards or have I? I think I might have. So one of the things I have learned here is that if I'm if I'm butting against something at the front, so this is this could be a plane and stop um, for all intents and purposes. What I've learned is that um, if I use a tape at peg, I can actually put that tape at peg in there. And the whole thing will move about, but when I'm playing and I've got enough control that I can actually, there's no need for us to use a peg. But should I feel the need to use a peg, I can move it back and I can stick a peg in and Obviously, I'm just use, um, moving the whole bench now. But once once that's in, you know, and if I want to, you know, I can kneel on it, whatever I'm going to do. So, if I'm using this sort of thickness all the time, it makes sense for me to have this peg, or this peg hole, dog hole, where it is. So, if I'm using thicker material, and I'm using thicker material um, exclusively, let's just say, and I don't, and I don't use, and I've never used this sort of thickness. There's no point in me having that hole there. It, it's just, it's defeating the object. So what I might, what I might want to do is have a hole set back here, which I already have, because I don't, I don't just use this thickness. Although this, this sort of thickness is is pretty common for me but occasionally you know i will have thicker boards um and just behind where the camera is there's some beach and the beat that beach is like 50 55 uh, millimeters in thickness so just you know just to give you just to give you an idea you know um if you're like me and you are using different sizes even though this is predominantly the size you'll use it is a good idea to have you know different um hole um different placements so as i said this one that's really good for this this sort of thickness but you know i have also got i've got, got this hole here you know that and that's going to be good for like maybe double this um and obviously i've got one set here so the kind of the point i'm making here is that when you are doing these placements put these Put these dog holes in as you need them and kind of do it for your work if that makes sense okay guys so this video is starting to get like really long now um don't forget if you've got questions um leave them in leave them in the comments uh, section and i i might not answer the question but what i will do if i get enough interest i will do a whole new video from from the questions that have been asked in the comments section so as i said it's getting a bit long so i'm going to cut it um here today um again thank you very much for watching really appreciate it um if you're not already um subscribe to us you know if you want to help the channel out subscribe look us up on instagram i'm on instagram there's links um in the description of this um or if you listen to this look on um Look on Instagram, look us up, um, D, DW Woodworks, um, and you should find us. Um, same on Facebook, TikTok. Um, so if you want to help us out, give us a like, give us a follow on those platforms. And until the next time, I should say and speak to you guys later.